The question we are answering is why do some spiders build webs? We are teaching grade five and our two content descriptors are living things have structural features that allow them to survive in their environment and with guidance, pose clarifying questions and make predictions about scientific investigations. Children have always been fascinated with the tiny inhabitants of the world around us, especially spiders. Now spiders are not actually insects, but instead are classified as arachnids. They have eight legs, two body segments, and some spiders are able to make complex webs using spider silk. Spider silk is an incredible fibre, as it is amazingly strong and elastic. In fact, scientists are currently trying to replicate the silk for use by humans. The spider excretes the silk from the rear of the abdomen as a liquid and is pulled by the spider's legs into solid fibres. To construct the web, multiple different types of silk is produced. Some are sticky, some are stretchy, and some are very strong. The combination of these three characteristics is what allows the web to trap prey without breaking and provide water and shelter for the spider. The process for constructing a spider web is quite intricate. The spider first finds a suitable location to begin constructing the web. It then releases an incredibly light piece of silk, which is taken by the wind across a gap to another point, such as a branch or bush. This is the foundation of the web. From here, the spider then anchors the web to the ground and various other branches before constructing the familiar spiral pattern of the web that is commonly seen. Once the base of the web is created, the spider will then coat the web in a sticky substance allowing the web to catch and trap insects for food. The web is able to stretch, which keeps it from breaking when something flies into it. A spider will use its web for the three necessities of a living thing, food, water and shelter. When something flies into the web, the spider is alerted due to the vibrations caused by the web. It then goes and wraps the prey in a silk cocoon, so it can be eaten later. It gets its water, when dew or moisture in the air condenses on the web in the form of tiny droplets. It's, all, it's important to note that the web is also the spider's home. Webs are constructed off the ground in order to reduce the chance of predators encountering the web, and is often made between two trees or branches. Ultimately, spiders build their web to survive. The web provides them with all the necessities that a living thing requires, but it is important to note that not all spiders build webs. Some build traps and others just simply hunt for their prey. Those who do build webs do so because they manage to adapt to their environment. The activity we are doing as a group focuses on an aspect of why some spiders make webs. The activity is about how the vibrations in the webs allow the spider to sense its surroundings and identify the level of danger the spider could be in or if they have acquired their afternoon tea. The class starts off being outside, standing around and holding a part of a spiderweb net located at the playground park across from the school grounds. Students are to stay off the net during the activity and only hold the net with both hands in case of someone falling and being injured. Follow the teacher's instructions when crossing the road. Okay. So the activity begins with one of our students on the spider web around it, not on top of it. So the activity is based on where one of the teachers will come around and make a vibration. While this happens, one of the students has their eyes closed, so they're un unable to know where the vibration comes from. So when the student has their eyes closed, one of the, one of the teachers around the net will make a vibration. Once that's happened, the student will then open their eyes and have a guess on where that vibration will be. The reason for this activity is that spiders have, have very poor eyesight, so they have to rely on their vibrations. They have to rely on their vibrations to know what is around them and where it could be. As the students return to the allocated groups of five in the class, they will now further explore the concept of why do some spiders make webs. Each group is allocated a piece of plywood, 450mm by 450mm, that already have 8 nails put into the plywood. And also there will be 5m of fishing line with scissors that will be used as the webbing. 
For the activity, I'll ask the students an underpinning question that will set the basis for the rest of the activity. What does a spider need to do to survive? A short video clip will be played that gives a description on the vibrations of a spider's web. This will help those visual learners understand the concept when watching. The teacher will reaffirm the behaviour rules when doing this activity as there are sharp and dangerous objects in use such as nails and scissors. If a student is to get injured from these tools, they will notify one of the teachers of the injury so they can be fixed appropriately. As the students start the activity, as you can see in our example, our, the fishing line goes across the nails to create a web-like figure. So as as myself and teacher, I'll be asking certain questions for each student. So, does what does each vibrate mean? Or does does a vibrate make the sound when you pluck it? So, for an example, I uh, Lucy will have her finger somewhere on the web, and I will make a plucking from one side, and she will see if she can feel it. Yeah, that's a strong vibration. Strong vibration, and, and each vibration means different different variations of maybe uh, food. Uh, prey or being a predator which then will cause chaos as you could say. So um, during the class as well we'll have um, on our projector web designs that students can uh, use if they're unsure on how to make their own web and they will they'll use that as, as a guide almost. So um, if everyone is finished and an extension students can then use their web and extend it to other tables and make a communication sort of sort of idea so students can then communicate across the room using the vibrations. Once everyone has had a go at testing their webs out, the teacher will have the students put their webs away and come back to the groups to discuss the activity and refer back to the focus question, why do some spiders make webs? The webbing is used for capturing spiders prey such as flies as the sticky silky web doesn't allow the, the fly to break free. A spider can also sense danger when large vibrations are created on the web and is able to move away. The reason for the spiders being so reliant on the web is because of their poor eyesight. Their legs gain the vibration and help the spider to identify what is coming. Due to our gauge activity being in a local park, there are many possible hazards that could arise. Through clear safety instructions and strategies that are aim to reduce risk, health and safety issues could be minimised. Some of those hazards could be falling off parts of the playground, students tripping over parts of the playground, environmental hazards such as roads, lakes or beaches nearby, overcrowding and strangers. Through a buddy system with the students, safety issues connected to strangers, the environment can be avoided or reduced. Clear expectations, rules and instructions will assist in ensuring students understand <coughs> what is acceptable and unacceptable behaviours. In the explore phase, students will be handling materials like wood, fishing lines and nails. These materials produce risk when being inappropriately used. These could be splinters, circulation problems, with the fishing line, cuts and bruises from lifting and dropping the wood piece. These issues could be avoided through clear safety instructions and behaviour management and monitoring. With the final activity in the explain phase, there are no major hazards, only general classroom hazards such as tripping. For the assessment phase of the learning experience, students will write up a scientific report based on the exercises they've just completed. They will need to include the correct information, which includes a title, question, hypothesis, materials, risk assessment, method, observations both written and visual, results, discussion and conclusion. Doing a scientific report is an effective method of assessment as it ensures they've understood the task as well as ensuring they can write the experiment up which we will need to do throughout their schooling career. Teacher will, the teacher will mark and grade the assessments judging on whether they have the correct information or not.